much. Welcome to each and every one of us who are with us here, or who are following as well through the uh, recording. And uh, welcome, special welcome to Jota and Sunai who are here. Who would like to pray for us, please, today? I'll pray. Not a problem. Okay, okay. Thank you, Jota. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you very much for the wonderful day that you blessed us with. Father, I ask you to guide us tonight. I um, ask that our Holy Spirit will help, us, help to guide us so we can receive your word and your blessings, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate a lot. We are now already on the week number three. Yes. That we have. And uh, life is running. But uh, today... I would like to, to go quickly on the, 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 what we call church manual. And I will introduce to you today as well what we called uh, the book. Uh, unfortunately, it, is, it might not be seen. It is <laughs> a book called um, uh, Bible Study Guide of uh, the Sabbath School Lesson. I've yes, heard about yes. it already. Yes. Yes, we have. Yes, you remember. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you studying it already? Do yes. you have access? Yes, yes. 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 Um, Marianne gave us a book the first Sabbath that we were there. Oh, perfect. That is very yes. great. That is very great. Yes. So we will be um, looking at it later on as well, as we can review, because it is one of the, the, the most beautiful aspect of our church. The Sabbath school classes, uh, in fact, allowing us to, to know exactly and to learn that discipleship uh, life that we have chosen to join. And by, by, by joining our church, it is allowing us to, to see and to review how far we are from our Jesus to come. And, 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 and the practical life is because the, the Sabbath school class is a daily, on a daily basis study, then it reminds you exactly that you have to study today at what time you have to, to get in touch with your God. So we'll see and uh, review it. But the first part, let us review the, let us review the, the what is it called? The church manual. Let me move on the side. Unfortunately, I have some kind of a challenge of my, let me close some of the unused, um, unused files so that I can speed up the computer. Okay. It is raining as well in this site. Really? Oh, we also, nice. we also have the weather is coming. <laughs> so the if we do coming. disappear, please excuse us. That might be the, the, the um, when the weather picks up on the farm, our power goes out sometimes. Yeah. Because the fuses, it happens. The fuses, yeah, the fuses break and then <laughs> we unfortunately don't have power. Mm. So. So, so if, um, if um, I am going to send to you this file, the big one, and maybe okay. you can review, it, there will not be time for us to review paragraph by paragraph, but yes, I will yes. be reviewing with you where I think it is very important and then you can read in between of each, uh, each uh, paragraph so that yes. you can see. Last week we were... Um, talking about why it is important to have a manual, a church manual. That was yes. the reason. And exactly like when you get a new car or when you get a new um, machine that you can use to cook, a powerful one in your kitchen, the first thing that you need to do is to read your manual to avoid to, to lose your warranty, isn't it? Yes. And, and, and that's exactly the same thing. When you join the church, the first thing that you need to understand is to, to read the manual of the church so that we can understand exactly why this church is being established. 
and 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 that is the reason uh, and the beauty of this church. When I joined some other churches, when I was not yet Adventist, there was no manual. The, 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 you just join and you just get the fellowship and that's it. But when yeah. I joined the Seventh day Adventist church, I, I really had pleasure because I found out from the manual that this is an organized church and God is a God of organization. He, he, if you look at the way he has organized the universe, the earth, then you can see definitely that he didn't see, he didn't do anything by chance or by on its own. He did it inch by inch or centimeter and millimeter by millimeter. And, and, and he did it in such a way that once he created it, he does not need to review or update it anymore. Mm. Have you seen that uh, uh, when you look at, at least only on, on, on our uh, solar system, we don't go bar, uh, beyond the solar system. Imagine the number of, of numbers of asters of the planets inside of the solar system that is spinning and spinning and spinning without stop. And our Earth is about uh, 56 to 86 thousand kilometers per hour. Imagine you drive at, at such speed. Yeah, and, and, really crazy. And, and if 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 the speed of the earth is slowing down, then it says that our ourselves will fall down from the earth because it is the spin and the speed of the earth that keeps the gravity to be on top of it. And that is yes. why no matter where on the on the planet you will position yourself, the gravity will always lead, lead you inside of the planet, not outside. So if yeah. the earth is stopping just one, one second, or it is stopping abruptly, all of us will jump somewhere. You don't yeah, know that. Be crazy. But imagine yeah. for 6,000 years, at least, the Lord used the planet to spin and to spin and to spin. And that is one of the reasons that you can see that God is a God of order. It is not late of one second, and it is not speeding of one second, exactly keeping that speed. And yes. if, if the planet that is not a living being is following the law of God, how much more about us, who yeah. are the, the, the crown of his creation? If you look at the, the week of creation, then it is actually meant for us. Everything that God started from the beginning, when he started to say, let the light be, is for you. When he started to organize the earth and put the, 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 the dry land to the, uh, the, what is it said, the, the, the water, he was thinking about you and I and myself. So God is good. He is doing things by thinking about who will be benefiting from it. And that's exactly the manual of the church, as I said, because that is showing the God that we, we worship. It is an organized God. Organized means that he put things in such a way that it, go, it does not go beyond that, that limit. And that is also his wish for each and every one of us. So when we look at the the chapter of today that we will be reviewing. Um, this is what he says. Uh, let me put the video here. So what we will be looking now is the authority and the function of the church manual. The authority and the function of the church manual. Um, let me be frank to you. I was only introduced to this manual when I was baptized and nobody else talked about it anymore after that. Mm. And it was only on my own that I decided to study the, the, the church manual. And that is why as an elder of our church, I feel that we need to have a time to study the manual of the church. 
and yes. you do not need to come back to it only because there is a problem that is wrong because we need to read it first as an information and then to allow us to avoid any kind of problems later on and that we will be reviewing later on as well but for from today we will see now the authority the function of the church manual so so now if you may please read the first paragraph the first paragraph all right uh, sorry <laughs> i just need sorry to no it's fine <laughs> The church manual has existed in its current format since 1932. It describes the operation and functions of local churches and their relationship to denominational structures in which they hold membership. The church manual also expresses the church understanding of Christian life and church governance and discipline based on biblical principles and the authority of duly assembled general conference sessions. God has ordained that the representatives of his church from all parts of the earth, when assembled in a general conference, shall have authority. Thank you very much. The 90 <laughs> is, 90 means uh, testimonies for the church. Okay? Oh, okay? So it is the volume nine, as you can see there. So, uh, I don't know if you have access to them on your phone, you can, but that is the beauty of it. You can have access to this uh, uh, book and it says exactly uh, the highest authority of our church is what we call the General Conference Assembly or at session. And those General Conference Assembly, as we can say, we will be reviewing them in the future are coming from all those countries who are 215. And the 215 countries are sending their representative. So the decision, we are not uh, uh, in the way like uh, in other churches, like for example, for the papacy, where whatever the Pope is telling, we follow. It's not that mm -hmm. way that we do. And even mm -hmm. the, the president of the general conference is not the highest because he's reporting as well to the assembly of the general conference who appointed him. So in our church then, uh, in our church then, there is nobody who is beyond the law and there is nobody who is almost powerful. We all fall under any of a certain authority and that is why we have to apply it. Welcome my brother, Michael, welcome. I hope you get uh, a step in the net today. <laughs> sure. Good. Good Hi. evening. Good, good. Hi, yeah, guys. Hello, Michael. Hello. the quality Hello. of your voice. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are reviewing together now the, the, what is it called, the church manual. And uh, we just started. You're not very late, my brother. What we just explained before was that God created uh his creation in a certain order and design that follow a path follow a manual and that is why a church that is created by god as well shall follow the same process by having its own manual to follow as well an order in the church and what it says here as uh, sunai just wrote, read there this church manual has been created in 1932. If you ask several of the Adventist people, very few of the people who are aware of that. If you ask that date, that is very important. It is 1932, so it will be 100 years on in 2032 then, this uh, church manual. And it says that it describes the operation and the function of the local church. So the, the church, our church is based on the local church because it is the local church that will provide directly the need of every community, isn't it? So yeah. when Jesus is uh, giving instruction, then it is the local church who are directly the, the what we can say, the the intermediate between Jesus 
and mm. the, the leadership of the church. And that is why everything that the local church shall do needs to reflect Jesus' uh, authority and Jesus' will. Otherwise, we will be going beyond that. Uh, some, some churches will have different understanding and others will have a different understanding. And then their relationship to denominational structure in which they hold membership, which means then that outside of the function of the church, they are related and interrelated between churches to churches as well. So for them to work together, they need to have one manual that um, guides them to know how are they related. For example, when Judah and Sunai has been married, then there was a certain manual, there was a law that was read to you and you agreed and signed on it that you have to do this kind of duty toward her and toward him. And that help you to, to build that relationship and you understand exactly what it means to be married, Differ which differentiates you with a person who is not married, but just dating. So the relationship you and the people who are dating are the same, you love each other, but the relationship you have as a wife of Judah and husband of, of Sunai are different than just a girlfriend and boyfriend. And that is why the relationship is determined by the manual and not only the relationship, but also the operation and the functions of the church. So if you need to, if you want to understand much better how our church is working, then this manual is a uh, is very good. Then it says here, the church manual also expresses the church understanding of Christian life. Remember, we have 215 countries and mm -hmm. at least 90 languages are being translated or uh, uh, spoken. So the church manual are translated as much as we can, especially for the, 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 the Bible study guide. So if we have our own interpretation of the Bible, then we will no longer be one church, isn't it? Mm. Because what unifies the church is not the, 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 the leadership, but rather the truth we believe. Mm. Let me repeat it again. What unifies our church is not the leadership, but the truth we believe. So if we believe in different truths, truths, then it will make us two different people believing and playing. Uh, it's like you are in the same uh, terrain and one is playing with uh, a, a, a soccer ball and one is playing with basketball. And no matter even if you want you have the mind of playing together, the rules are different. The, the, the size of the balls are different and everything that is playing within that game are different and that is why we need the principle to law to help us to understand what it means what the bible uh, explains us and it says as well the first one is the life as it is said here let me highlight this one the second one and the church governance how we are being governed number three is the discipline how we are, are being disciplined and then at the end it says, and the authority of a duly assembly general conference session. So it explains even to you that you have that authority to appoint the people who will be going to the general conference in session. So that is part of it. And, and Ellen G. White just said here that uh, God has ordained those representatives to, to be uh, from all the parts of the earth, and when they are assembled, then they have the authority to decide. That is how God is being using uh, the way to appoint how are we going to live in the next uh, five years, in the next 10 years. And that's why our theme for this coming uh, five years is I will go. So no matter who will be, uh, elected there, 
the people who will be elected then have to follow and accomplish that I will go aspect. And that is the beauty of the church. So it doesn't depend on the leadership. It is the, the, the general conference who decide everything about it, and then the leadership will just execute what it says there. Any questions related to that up to here? No. <clears throat> okay, it's clear. And it says here, uh, I will be talking quickly of the two materials, two types of materials in the church manual. It says the content of each chapter is of worldwide value. So, so the manual is then a worldwide manual. It's not only of South Africa, or it's on, not only of Zimbabwe or Madagascar or United States, it is worldwide and is applicable to every church organization, congregation, and member. And it says recognizing the need for variation in some uh, sections, additional explanatory materials presented as guidance and examples appears as note at the end of the church manual. So there are a lot of notes at the end. And it says the note have subheadings corresponding to the chapter subheading and the page number of the main text. Now, my brother, Michael, can you please read for us this part, the, the, the standard practice of the church? Please. Sure. sure. The, standard, the standards and practices of the church are based upon principles of the Holy Scriptures. The principles underscore... <laughs> The, sorry, can you just stop doing that? It's very distracting. <laughs> oh, sorry. The, the <laughs> principles, the principles underscored by the by the Holy Spirit of prophecy. Sorry, by the Spirit of prophecy, are set forth in the Church Manual. They are followed in all matters pertaining to the administration and operation of local churches. The Church Manual also defines the relationship that exists between the local congregation and the conference or other entities of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination organization. No attempt should be made to set up standards of membership or to make memberships or to make or attempt to enforce rules or regulations. Okay. Yeah, regulations for the local operations that are contrary to the decisions adopted by the general conference in session and that are set forth in the church manual. Thank you very much, my brother. So it also emphasizing what we just explained that whatever is in the manual is reflecting the understanding of our church of how the Holy Spirit, uh, Scripture is being uh, speaking about it. And that is why the decisions within it cannot go through one person understanding or one country's understanding or several mm -hmm. countries understanding. It is a world decision of a general conference and it is the, the, the administration and the operation of the local church itself that is being inside of it. I think I will be uh, ending there for now about the... the Hello? What is it called? Can you hear me? Yes? Yeah. We're still here, uh, Judah. Yes? Do you have a question? I see you guys having some connection problems. Mm -hmm. Brother Thierry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Wonderful. I can it's 100% from your side. Unfortunately, from Judah and Sunai, I think because of uh, because of uh, the rain, mm. then it has a problem. Right. But they can uh, still follow from the, the uh, what is it called the the lesson recording. from the recording. Yes. Yeah. But I would like to talk about. Uh, uh, the lesson today, my brother, do you have uh, the Sabbath school study guide? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. So um, 
the sub of school study guide is what I would like to, 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 to explain today. Uh, I think the best part of it shall be this first one. When you look at uh, the structure of our um, Sabbath school, our, our week is meant of 52 weeks during the year. And the 52 weeks were subdivided into four, which is a quarter, if we can say, in, in, in this then. And the yes. uh, 52 weeks that we, we can see then has been subdivided into four uh, quarters, which is three months, if we can say. And every yes. three months, every three months, we are changing a new topic at the time, as it was said. And uh, uh, as we can see, let me just say, uh, internet is, we will try to join. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. Waiting for you. We will continue, but please join as you can. But oh, you're busy typing. <laughs> oh, yeah, worry. I'm typing to, to <laughs> them, yes. Yeah, so uh, it says, um, it is still So when you look at the, 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 the book, as we said then, uh, every quarter, which is three months, we change a new topic. And every topic that we can see here is exactly subdivided into 13 sabbaths. So the 13 sabbaths is, as you can see here, it starts at the number one to 13. So, uh, with 52 sabbaths during the year, we subdivide it into four, which is giving us a quarter. And one quarter, which is three months, is subdivided into 13 sabbaths. So that is why every 13 sabbaths, we are changing to a new lesson every time, every time. And the lesson that we are studying, we have it from number one to number 13. And when we look at it, uh, the structure is we start always on the Sabbath afternoon and we will end at the end, sorry if I go very quickly, we end always on a Friday. That is how it is working when you study the, the lesson. And then the Sabbath afternoon is most above all what we can say an introduction. And not only an introduction, but it talks about the, 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 the best passages we are meant to read during that, that week. So most of the time, you can read it as well ahead of time. Or you can wait for the, the passage to, to read for it because it will ask you to read those passages. And then there is this part that almost uh, Adventists before always needed to repeat. And when I was in Madagascar, there are some kind of, uh, 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 every 13 Sabbath, we repeat without reading the 13, uh, what we can say, memory text. And at the end of the year, like on the end of December, there is also a 13 Sabbath where we repeat the memory text for 52 uh, of them. So the title plus the memory text, I do not see it here in South Africa, but when you go in Madagascar and you see an old person, a small baby repeating 52 texts with, by memory, it is really wonderful. And that is how you grow, you grow in studying your Bible. And then when we go in the, the, the lesson, it is uh, every day, you have also the title. And inside of the, the title, it is talking about the introduction of the lesson. And then it will ask you to read the passage. And you can comment inside of this one based on what you read. And then the question that is being asked to us here, it will exactly be um, answered within the next paragraph below it. And then at the end of every day, there is a reflection or a ref reflective question that will 
ask you to meditate upon the question when he talks about me eaten. The me eaten, for example, it was talking about me, uh, which is meaning if, and eaten is only uh, or who will give it was said. And it is when you read this passage of the Bible, it was used several times in the Bible when God wanted something to happen. But unfortunately, uh, the, the Israelites were not really in that mind. So it was like just a wish to God. And that is why when you read this passage, it was wonderful. For example, this one, it says, oh, that I might have my request. But instead of, oh, it says, it should be me yeten that we need to put there, which means who will give up if only that I might have my request. That is the, the meaning of, uh, of the passage. So that is how we study the lesson. And then when we go now in the, the, uh, the, 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 the Friday part, Friday is a little bit different because it goes with a further more study. When most of the time we have uh, some of the book of spirit of prophecy to review, and then there are uh, questions that are being discussed within the, 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 the Friday so that you can discuss about it within the, the, the Sabbath school class. And then inside of it, maybe you, you, you have not seen this part yet, there are some kind of an inside story where some people all around the world are making some testimonies and you can read those testimonies to help you. For example, this one is a person, as it says, um, um, let me read it, provided a general conference. I think there is no name for this one sometimes. The challenge that they don't give the name are because some of those people are, are sensitive the, 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 the name. But it says it is Chang Min Chang. That is the one who is doing the, the history. So this is the person. Unfortunately, I do not see the title of the person or where is that person living. Sometimes it is because of sensitiveness of the, the, the teaching. And then there is a part where we call the teacher's comments, where it is teaching you uh, some analysis, deeper analysis that uh, not every student of the Sabbath school will see, and it is showing several parts. The first one is the overview. The second one is the commentary. And then the third one is about the application. If I uh, rem remember, yes, life application. So the first part is when it is asking you about the overview of the, of the study. Then it is commenting uh, furthermore, what about you, what you have studied within the, the study and at the end, it is giving you some life application. So when you study the, the, the Sabbath school, these three parts are very important where you need to understand in globality the story first, then number two, where you comment about what is happening and the number three, where you will be addressing some of the challenges within uh, the life application so that you can apply it in your life. So I will be ending here and we have notes behind here, unless you have questions. Uh, do you have questions related to the Sabbath school, please? No, no questions from my side. No, thank okay, you. thank you, thank you, Michael. Okay, I presume that you have no question. If you do not have questions, then let me uh, lead you to the next study that we will be looking. I think we only will be on the first part this time so that we can finish what we ought to finish. Uh, last week, we have studied about, um, last week we have studied about uh, what we call um, to be a disciple of Christ. And this week, we will be reviewing uh, about an important aspect of if being a disciple is so good, then is there a cost to it? Uh, I hope you can see what I see on the screen. 
Do you see what is on the screen, please? Hello? Hello? Okay, hello, yes, you can hear? Okay. Can you hear? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, we can. Sorry. Uh, Jota, is it possible for you to read the first paragraph, please? While our, our relationship with Jesus brings us great joy, statements. Seems like I have lost you. So uh, based on what we, we read here, I will be sending a copy on, on the WhatsApp as well, so you can follow uh, this paragraph, I think, like this. Okay, so it is sent on, on your WhatsApp. And this is what it says uh, to us. The cost of discipleship. Um, while our relationship with Jesus brings us great joy, some of Christ's strongest statements emphasize, uh, uh, emphasize the cost of following him and of being his disciple. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake we'll find it Matthew 16, verse 24 to 25. Whoever of you does not forsake and all that he has cannot be my disciple. In other way then, uh, yet it is very wonderful to, to, to follow Jesus and to adore him and to accept him. There is every good things on earth and on life in life always has a cost, isn't it? Yes, and that cost is exactly what Jesus is talking here. Three things that he's sharing, if you see the highlight on, on, on the, 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 the text, it says the first one is we need to deny ourselves, which means that after you deny yourself, what is the most important person in your life is not your wife is not yourself, it is Jesus. And then the second one, it is useless to deny yourself and then becoming idle or you do not know, do anything. The second thing is a, a verb of action. You take up the cross. And the third action that we can say here is you follow me. And uh, when you follow this, our Jesus, I think I will be focusing on this first part only today. When you look at deny yourself, take up the cross and follow Jesus, there are things that you need to understand when we, we, we talk about the cross. The first thing is this. If Jesus is talking to this about this to every disciple, it means then that Judah will have his own cross. Sunai will have his own, her own cross. Myself will have. Oliva, my wife, will have. Michael will have. Which means that there is no Christian who shall not carry cross if we believe in this Jesus. But when you look at, at, at what Jesus is telling here is this. The first way that you see that the person is a Christian is if that person is 
carrying cross. And cross sometimes of things that we think are very difficult. But Jesus is sending a Simon. Do you remember that Simon who helped Jesus when he was so tired to carry his cross? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and at a certain level of your life as well, Judah and Sunai, God will help you by sending you people to assist you in your life. Isn't that good? And you, God knows exactly at what time of your life you're very tired. And on that very time, he will send somebody to help you. And that person will completely assist you. But this is the thing. The cross is not the cross of Simon. It is the cross of Jesus, isn't it? So at a certain point of the life of Jesus, Simon had to... To, 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 to go away from him, and he had to carry on again with uh, uh, taking up his cross to Calvary. And at the same time as well, the church is the Simon that God is sending to you. And there are certain, certain parts of your life where you need the church to support you. But at a certain point as well, Judah and Sunai, the cross that you're carrying is your cross which means that you will end up carrying it even if no one else will no longer continue to help it. So you cannot blame anyone not to help you because the cross is your cross. My cross is my cross. And that is why in this one, we need to follow the, 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 the model of Jesus by accepting the cross until the end. And tell me when you get the cross, where you will be ending with that cross? Can you tell me where? Yeah. Where? You say where? I have not heard you. He said in the grave. Oh, oh. Judah said I in the grave. I heard in the grave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me call him back because it, I think it, he's cutting. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, brother. <laughs> or maybe if you're calling back. I was wondering oh, why I'm he's there. Him, he's but... there. He's there now. <laughs> he's there. <laughs> yeah. They are back. Oh, thank God. Thank God. No. Thank God you're yeah. back. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Have hey guys, I was... Michael is wondering how he can hear you, and yet you are not there. <laughs> yeah, I figured it out, but like at first I was they, they, so, they so surprised. Following Jesus, you are following Jesus. Jesus said, uh, "Quickly, you will not see me, and quickly you will see me." <laughs> <laughs> so you see, the beauty of it is this: um, the first thing that happens is. At a certain point of your life, as I said, Michael, you will have to end up carrying your cross. But my question is, where will you end up with that cross before it goes to the grave? Where you will end up? That I do not have an answer to. I my answer to that was uh, when we when we see Jesus again, when he mm -hmm. comes on the clouds of glory, then we'll we'll not carry the cross anymore. But you said. <laughs> before the grave so i don't know before the grave let, let, let let's be very practical and see what was on in the bible what happened was jesus ended up nailed on the cross isn't it yes <laughs> so if you already are complaining uh... and crying when you carry the cross what would happen with you when you will be nailed on it so a lot of people are, are, are complaining, telling, look at this happening to me, this happening to me, this happening to me, and yet we are still carrying the cross. Don't they know that when they will be nailed, it is far more uh, uh, painful than carrying that cross. But mm -hmm. look at how beautiful what Jesus was teaching us 
when he was on the cross. The first thing that Jesus did on the cross is to forgive the people who put them, who put him in on the cross, isn't it? Yes. So the first thing that you need to do when you are nailed on the cross, my brother, my sister, is you have to forgive the people who are persecuting you. Forgiveness is the best way to show to people that you have been nailed on the cross. Number two, Jesus, there are three people who were nailed and crucified with Jesus on the cross. The two thieves and Jesus was in the middle. And instead of focusing on his suffering, rather Jesus focused on helping and encouraging the people who were crucified close to him as well. So when you are crucified as well, when you feel painful in your life, the best solution for you is to focus on people having the same challenges as you are. Mm. For example, my brother, Michael, what kind of issue are you having right now? Then instead of complaining for that issue, try to address people who are having the same, the same issue as yours and talk and encourage that person and you will see God will intervene in your life. The same as Judah and, and Judah and Sunai as well. What kind of challenges you're facing right now? Instead of talking about it, talk to people facing the same challenges and it will help you. The same as well with Isabel and Philip. Instead of complaining about it, talk to people having the same challenges as you are. And then the third one, as you can see here, is this. Uh, when you or nailed on the cross and you try to encourage people. Remember what Jesus told to the, to the, the thief. He said, remember, uh, the, the thief said, remember me when you will be in your kingdom. And Jesus said, told this thief, I will tell you today, comma, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus was not talking that he will be with him directly that day. He says, I will tell you today, comma, you will be with me in paradise. So when you are nailed on the cross, the third thing that you need to do, my brother Michael, is to help people to be ready for the kingdom to come, which means that you need to prepare people to become disciple of Christ also. So the three things that we need to do, uh, as I remember, uh, I reminded them. The first one is, first of all, forgive the people who put you in the, on that cross. Number two is focus on people having the same challenges as you are and encourage them. And number three is remind people of the kingdom of God who is come, which is coming. And my last question that I would like to ask the three of you, the, two, the three of you, how do you know that you are being nailed on the cross? Can you tell me? How do like you know you. that you still carry the cross but not being nailed on it? And how do you know when you are nailed on the cross? So I think, I think mm -hmm. if, uh, like it says there, like you highlighted in blue, that, uh, that would be the self-denial would be your, um, be you, you basically carrying the cross and the sacrifice is perhaps, I think when you are nailed to the cross, you know, like Jesus said, for no greater love does any man have than this but to lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. but, but how do you know that you are being nailed on the cross? Um, you have to sacrifice yourself for, for the sake of others, man, and what you want for the sake of others. But you are already sacrificing uh, when you accept the cross, isn't it? But how 
in your life are you going to know that this time I am still carrying the cross. And now it is time that God of people of nail, nail, nailing me on the cross. Let me answer the, the, the question. Here it is. When, the, when Jesus was on the cross, remember what happened. It became dark. And Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Sabachthani. You remember that? When it sa he says, God, God, why are you forsaking me? Which means that, my brother, that when you feel that God is not answering to your prayer, then at that point, you are being nailed on the cross. When you feel that God is silent and you are asking for prayers, help me for this God, help me for that, help me for this. And it seems like God is silent to it. Let me repeat it for Judah and Sunai as well. The way you know that God is answering, God, that you are being nailed on the cross is when you hear and you feel that God is silent toward you. Because Jesus himself said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, God, God, why are you forsaking me and leaving me alone? So the way you know that you are being uh, nailed on the cross is when God is silent toward your prayers. So when he is silent, don't talk too much. Instead, remain faithful until the end. People will ask you to go down from the, the cross. And they said, you saved people, so save yourself today. Jesus could have be, uh, was able to go down from the cross. But if he did that, we will be lost completely. So sometimes people are also, uh, uh, what is the word in English that we can say? We are trying to put spices on you so that you become angrier if we can say, and we are pushing you at your limit, but you need to show to them that you're Christian no matter what is happening. So today, my last call upon you is this. When you accept to die, God will revive you and will wake you up and resurrect you like Jesus. So even if it is a challenge full time that you've been following this church, Follow Jesus until the end, and he will help you. Uh, we have 30 seconds left now, so I would like to invite Michael to pray for us this time, for us to accept to be a disciple of Christ until the end. Right, let's close our eyes. Faithful God and Father, great are you, and great is all your works. We acknowledge that we are here today gathered, even in the way that we are, because you have been working great works in us, and you have been so faithful and good. And Father, help us to remember that you will never forsake us or leave us. Help us to always remember, as the words you spoke to Joshua, saying, be strong and of good courage, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that we will go, that we will not only say, um here i am sent me but that we will actually follow through and listen to your spirit and be at your feet seeking daily for the salvation of others seeking your kingdom and your righteousness father for ourselves and for others that by our love all may know that we are your disciples you are truly good and my words cannot express the limit the depth and um all the ways in which you are good. We praise you and we thank you for bringing us so far. And we trust you, Father. We place our trust anew in you that you will take us further along this straight and narrow path where we have to deny ourselves, where we have to, to choose to sacrifice ourselves and even remain faithful when it seems that you are not, not there, when it seems like you are not hearing, to know, to stand upon your promises that cannot fail. In Jesus' name, I pray this and I thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, family. It was wonderful thank to be with you. you today. Thank you. Thank I will you. not thank keep you it too long, but thank you.
Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening.